Hi, my name is Kevin Taylor. I would like to ask who is behind the Nicodemus contracts in this government? This is with all due respect. So with all due respect, today I would like to talk to my fellow Ghanaians. I've been doing this job as a journalist for some time now and I've never been so heartbroken. What I'm about to show you today is actually going to break your heart. It's actually also going to make you think as a Ghanaian and also it's actually going to make you realize that we are in very difficult times and that unless we become smart, unless we start to focus and think as a people, and think about the future of this nation. If we don't take care in the next year, this country is going to go down the drain. Today, I would like to talk to a few people. The parliamentarians, the civil servants, the lawyers, the graduates. In fact, I want to talk to the middle class. The middle class that have had the privilege of going to school and understanding whatever they read. The middle class that can go back home and talk to our mothers our uncles who did not have the privilege to also go to school and understand all the big English and the jargons in contracts or documents the government throws at us. You are the people I'm speaking to. This is not the time to be fighting each other. This is the time to be listening to the issues and picking out what you think will help this nation. The content is what is important. The middle class, every Ghanaian who will be watching me today should make sure that his or her MP gets a hold of this. I'm going to put out 15 questions to some individuals. 15 questions. And I'm going to expose some individuals in government today. And I hope every Ghanaian will agree with me. And I hope every Ghanaian will take their time to look at the issues, irrespective of their party affiliation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Nicodemus contract. Now let's start. You've seen three people behind me today. There's the president, there's the president cousin of Uriata, who is the finance minister, and also there's Ajoa Safo, who is the procurement minister. Now, producer, what I want you to do is these three people, move them to the left. Yes, move them to the left. I would like you to bring one person to the right. Make enough space and put this person here. This person, the works and housing minister, Atacha. I would like you to put this gentleman here. Now, what I would like people to understand is the president is related to Atachia. You know Atachia is a twin. His twin sister is a judge. Atachia would have been even a chief in the Achim area if not him being um, a twin. So he's directly connected to the president um, in, in, in terms of family. Atachia is a cousin to the finance minister who is also a direct cousin or a family to the president. Now, Atachia is a lawyer. Atachia has had worked with Adjua Safo for a couple of years. Adjua Safo, so basically, Adjua Safo's boss, as a young lawyer, was Atachia. So, the reason why I put all these three people here is for you to understand the connection between these people. I'm talking about family connection and political connection. And also, you can talk about professional connections. The reason why I put them here is because I want you people to understand the basis of the expose today. All right. Now, let's move on. I would like us to watch a short video by Atachia, his own statement, after he took office as the minister of the Works and Housing Ministry. Now, let's listen to Atachia. It's just a minute long. Shall continue and execute projects and programs commenced by the previous government. That is eminently sensible because I can't see a situation in which you succeed the government and the government has done good projects and because of what I call pettiness of mind, the succeeding government will not attend to the previous, I mean, projects because it is expensive to abandon projects because of what we call cost overruns. If projects were started by uh, President Kufo and they were not completed, by uh, President uh, Mahama, and you want to deal with the projects now, 
the cost implications are obvious for everybody to see now the person you had there was Atachina. he is the works and housing minister if we understand him very well he wanted us to understand that there's something called progressive governance and that when the government comes in they need to continue whatever the previous government left behind and what the previous government too had to continue what the gov the predecessors left behind so it was it was explicit it was straightforward and he made his point clear i would like to show you something this is some of the affordable housing kufo left from kufo's time till now we've not finished it we've not completed it now this is also some of the affordable housing john dramani mahama left recently atacha came in he said so many things and these houses are still sitting there nobody's living in there and this man is telling us that it is the responsibility of government to continue works of their predecessors i'll leave that there because it, they are his own words now let's start the expose i like Ghanaians to understand that today's expose is going to come with big figures big big figures that will shock the country me myself i'm so shocked that it, it is so difficult for me to in fact do this show today I'm shocked because the kinds of figures I'm seeing here, I don't expect individuals to go behind the scenes, sit with their friends, and put things together and hide it from we, the people who have put in or given them these positions to occupy. Now, the expose. So, the Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Atachian, signed two contracts, one in August and one in October. In August, he signed a contract with one company called Ethno Limited. Yes, Ethno Limited, they are based in Cantonment. Now, with the Ethno Limited, what he did was he contracted them that they will be building 20,000 affordable houses. Yes, 20,000. And that the government of Ghana was going to pay 961 million Ghana cities for that, that contract. 20,000 affordable housing. Now, this, co this company is actually a Ghanaian company. The owner or the CEO of the company is called Jude Kwapon. Jude Kwapon. This is the guy. This is his LinkedIn page. And as you can see, he stated it there. Jude Kwapon. He is the CEO of that company called Ethnel, Ethnel Limited. Now, when you go into the contract, at page 16, there were witnesses. There's a witness. The person who signed as a witness for the Ministry of Works and Housing is Solomon Asula. Solomon Asula is the chief director at the Ministry of Works and Housing. I have a reason why I am speaking and mentioning names and letting people know the people who were involved in this contract signing. So at the end of the day, they said they were going to pay $961 million. And you have to understand that this contract was signed, the money, everything was quoted in dollars. This is a 60-page document. It was signed by the minister. Honorable Samuel Atachia in August 2018. Now, let's move forward. That is one contract. The second contract was signed in October 2018. And that contract was signed between the government of Ghana, the construction of 1 million affordable housing units. And it was the contract was between the Ministry of Works on Housing representing Ghana and Greenspan Innovation Limited and Global Housing Solutions. This contract was signed in October 2018. As you can see, that is the contract. And then when you go to page 15, as usual, it's the same as the first one. What you see there is the person who signed for the Republic of Ghana is the Honorable Atachia. Designation is Minister. Now his witness was the Chief Director, Solomon Asuola. So Solomon has been in these things. You have to understand the Chief Director was part of this deal. Now, the company that the government of Ghana contracted to build 1 million houses is Greenspan Innovation. It's actually a Ghanaian-based company. This company also had its own bosses signing for the company. The owner or the CEO of the company, Greenspan Company, Greenspan Innovation Limited, her name is Rebecca A. Sapon. Take notice of this name. The CEO of Greenspan, Greenspan Innovation Limited, is Rebecca A. Sapon. She is the chief executive. Now, take a look at this. You see this? I'm just asking. This woman was sworn in as the NPP chairperson in Germany. 
Her name is Rebecca Sapon. A Sapon. I'm just asking, is this the same woman who is the CEO of Greenspan Innovation? This is a question. This is just a question. I want to know is Rebecca A. Sapon. Rebecca A. Sapon. The NPP Germany chairperson. Is she the CEO of Greenspan Innovations? This is a question that I'm just throwing out there that I know that the Works and Housing Minister will come out and answer. The witness that day for that company is Heinz Lohinger. He also signed as a witness for Greenspan Innovation. Now, with Greenspan Innovation, the government of Ghana signed a contract worth, listen to this, $34 billion. Watch my lips, my fellow Ghanaians. I'm taking my time to explain this to every Ghanaian. The contract the Ministry of Works and Housing signed in October 2018 with Greenspan uh, Innovations to build 1 million houses in Ghana, affordable houses, is 34 billion, 409 million, 750,000. Let me round it up. It is $34 billion. And we understand that this contract was signed in dollars. $34 billion. When you convert that into cities, it's 189 trillion cities. I don't want to go to the rest of the figures. 189 trillion cities. That is the amount they signed. And it's in the contract. Atachia and its chief director penned this contract. They sat with these companies. They sat with these two companies and signed this um, contract respectively. One in August 2018, which cost $961 million. In city equivalent, it is 5 trillion cities. One also in October 2018, which cost $39,409,750,000. That one is $39, $34 billion. The one with Greenspan is $34 billion. The equivalent in cities is $189 trillion. Let's take some time and breathe. Now let's move on. You see, the reason why I'm explaining this to my fellow Ghanaians is that before such contracts are signed in Ghana, the finance minister has to know about it. The procurement minister has to know about it. It has to go through parliament. You know, sometimes the president even has to look at it. Because I remember during Mahama's time, those were the, the bone of contention that President Mahama gave some executive order and all that. So, this, the monies I'm mentioning here are not chicken change. These are serious money. When you put the two contracts together, we are talking about 194 trillion Ghana cities. 194 trillion Ghana cities. These two contracts. And they were all signed in October. August and October, respectively, 2018. Now, I would like to ask, the ministers listening to me, the honorable ministers in parliament, those on the respective board, does anyone know about this contract? I would like to ask, I told you at the beginning that I have 15 questions I'll be asking the Minister of Works and Housing, the Finance Minister and Parliament. 15 questions because I have another 30-page document here, which I don't want to release. I have a reason. And it's because I want Atachia to come out and answer these 15 questions. All that we know now, let me sum everything up for Ghanaians to understand. Two contracts have been signed by the Minister of Works and Housing, Honorable Atachia. One was with a company called Othniel Limited on August 2018. The contract was for them to build 20,000 affordable housing. And the contract was, was worth $961 million. $961 million. Two months after, in October, the Minister of Works and Housing, or the Ministry, they signed another contract with another company called Greenspan Innovation Limited uh, and Global Housing Solution. That, com that company was also contracted to build 1 million affordable housing in Ghana. And that contract cost $34 billion, $34 billion, equivalent of that in cities is $189 trillion. Now, I don't want to go too deep. The reason is, I just want to ask questions because every question that I'm going to ask here, you have to understand, every question I'm going to ask on this show today, I have the answer here. And I would like to talk, tell the Honorable Minister Atachia that, Ghanaians are listening. We are watching him. He needs to come out 
and answer these questions. He needs to tell us that if he is the one who signed this contract, because these are legit contracts, and I'm going to put the documents out, and I'm going to tell the honorable ministers in parliament, both on, on the left, on the right, to also come out and tell us Ghanaians if they know anything about these contracts. A 60-page contract and a 20-page contract, respectively, between these two companies. Now, these are the 15 questions I would like attaching the Minister of Works and Housing to respond to. I told you earlier on that I have 30 documents, 30-page document I'm not going to release today because every question that I will ask today have answers to them here. Now, question number one to the Minister of Works and Housing, Atachian. The question is simple. Minister, Honorable Atachian, did you sign these two contracts? You represent the people of Ibuakwa South. You say you are a Christian. You are a man of God. I just want to ask you this simple question. Did you sign this contract? The second question is, what is the total budget of your ministry, the Ministry of Works and Housing in 2018? What was your total budget? Because according to the Ministry of Finance website, I'm not making this up. According to the Ministry of Finance website, budgetary allocation to the Ministry of Works and Housing is 91 million Ghana cities. 91 million Ghana cities. So how can the minister or you and your chief director, Solomon Asola, sign two contracts worth 194 trillion Ghana cities? Over 2,000 times. 2,000 times higher than the budgetary allocation. The third question to you, Mr. Minister Atachia is, was parliamentary approval obtained before this contract was signed? It's simple. Did parliament approve this because of, before the contract was signed? The fourth question to you, Atachia, is, did the contract go to the Central Tender Review Board? Did the contract go to the Central Tender Review Board? This question also goes to the procurement minister. We would like to know if she has an idea about this contract. The fifth question is, is there a directive from the Ministry of Finance that government ministries and agencies cannot, cannot sign contracts in dollars? Is there a directive like that? And if yes, please where is the approval from the finance ministry for these two contracts? If it is yes, please where is the approval from the finance minister or Ken Oforiata, who is a cousin to the president. That's why I have his picture here. So we can also ask him if he actually gave some approval. The sixth question is, these two projects are not mentioned in any of the budgets approved by Parliament in 2017, 2018, or 2019. So I would like to ask, Ghanaians would like to know, how are these contracts funded? How are these contracts funded? Because in our budget in 2017, 2018, 2019, it did not show anywhere. And everyone can check that. So how are these contracts funded? How will Ghana pay for these houses when they are built? Atachian needs to answer these questions. Question number seven. These contracts have not been reported in the media, as I know now. No media house has reported on this contract. Is the cabinet aware of these two projects? Is the cabinet aware of these two projects? Can the minister please tell us, I mean, I mean Atachian, can you please tell us who is aware and who authorized these projects? The eighth question. Projects of this quantum are not listed on the PPA website. When you go on the PPA website, this project, this huge project are not listed there. Is the PPA aware of these contracts? I just suffer. For... This is your question. I'm directing this to you. Is the PPA aware of this contract? Because on the website, it is not showing there. Were these contracts published on the PPA website? I just suffer. For... This is a question to you. Question nine. The Public Financial Management Act of 2016, Act 921, Section 33, prescribes that for a multi-year contract, yes, a contract which is more than one year, no agreement can be entered into without the right and approval of the Minister of Finance and authorized by Parliament. Can the Honorable Minister Atachia show us the approval from Parliament where he is a member and the written approval of his cousin, the Finance Minister, on this contract? Simple. Question number 10. Section 5 of the same law says that the advice of the Attorney General must be obtained before such a contract is signed by a minister. We would like to see a copy of the advice from the Attorney General. That is the tenth question. We just want to see the advice from the Attorney General because it is clear that you need to have an advice from the Attorney General. The eleventh question. 
what internal process were followed at the Ministry of Works and Housing before these contracts were signed by the minister and his chief director. This is simple. Question number 12. The 1 million houses that are supposed to be constructed across the country, we would like to know where are they going to be constructed? In which regions? Has the land been secured? How many per region? Because 1 million. Can you show us these details in the first and second contract? Yes, I mean the 1 million housing and the 20,000 housing. Question number 13. Madam Rebecca A. Sapon, the woman I just showed, Madam Rebecca A. Sapon, the Group Chief Executive Officer of Greenspan Innovation Limited, beneficiary of the 34 billion contract. Is she the same Rebecca Sapon, who is the chairperson of the MPP Germany branch? Simple, straightforward question. Question number 14. What track record do Greenspan Innovation Limited and Othniel Limited have in the construction industry? We just want to know the track record of these two companies. And the last question, it's coming from myself, and it's coming from Ghanaians to the government of Ghana, specifically to the minister, Atachian. Finally, if a simple minister can sit in his office and sign a contract worth $35 billion, $35 billion, how on earth can you convince me that the president, Nanado Danko Kufuado, does not know about this? I have documents here. I told you, Ghanaians, I'm not going anywhere. These are 15 solid questions, and all the answers are here. I expect Atachia to come out and tell Ghanaians that he did not sign these contracts. Ladies and gentlemen, the game has just begun. We are not kidding anymore. I am serious about this. Until we get serious and take our country back from criminals, from liars, from impersonators, we will never get to where we want to go. We could have our own political affiliations, our own differences, but when it comes to the national agenda, we should come together as one people and fight the same cause. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Ekobedu Taylor. Today, I'm angry. Today, I am heartbroken. But still, this show will continue. My name is Kevin Taylor, and this is With All Your Respect.